Hi there, BioWorld is back and in today's episode, I'm going to be explaining osmoregulation in plants. This is from the subtopic 11.4 of the STPM Semester 2 Syllabus, Part B, where I'm going to describe the various types of plant adaptations to prevent water loss, and the plants I'm going to discuss are halophytes and xerophytes. So come join me. Have you noticed how hot the weather is these days? Lucky for us, we have mechanisms that help to regulate our body temperature so that our temperature remains at 36.9 degrees Celsius. But what about plants? They are exposed to the extreme sunlight. How do they handle increase in temperature? Let's find out. Firstly, let me introduce the two types of plants, halophytes and xerophytes. Both of these plants live in extreme environments. So I'm going to share with you adaptations carried out by both these plants to survive in these habitats. Here are the habitats I mentioned earlier. I'll start with the halophytes. Now, examples of halophytes include plants like Abyssinia, Sonirathia, Brugera, and Rhizophora. They are all mangrove plants. Now, the mangrove is where seawater meets the land. When seawater washes onto the land, salt from the seawater deposits into the soil, causing the soil to have high salinity. The high salt concentration causes water from the halophytes to diffuse into the soil. Besides that, the halophytes also lose water due to the intense sunlight that promotes transpiration. Now let's look at the xerophytes. Example of xerophytes are the cactus. They live in the desert which is exposed to intense sunlight. Sunlight promotes evaporation of water from the soil. So, the desert soil has low water potential. Added to that, the cactus itself will lose water due to transpiration. Now, let's look at how both the halophytes and the xerophytes help to overcome this problem. The solution to their problems lies in firstly minimizing water loss and secondly maximizing water storage. Let's find out how they do this. To begin with, we'll start with the xerophytes. The leaves, stem and roots of the xerophytes are adapted to overcome water problems. Let me begin my explanation with leaves. Here is a picture of the leaves in xerophytes. As you can see, there are no leaves. Instead, the leaves have been modified into thorns. And these thorns are either lignified or have a thick layer of cuticle. By doing this adaptation, the surface area is reduced. And once the surface area is reduced, the rate of transpiration is also reduced and in this way, water loss by evaporation is minimized. Next, we have a look at the adaptation of the stem. The whole body of the xerophyte is actually its stem. And on the stem surface, there are specialized stomata. As you can see in this picture, the stomata is hidden inside the stem. We call this as a sunken stomata. Added to that, the guard cells that make the stomata carry out the crassulacean acid metabolism pathway. Now, you've learned about this in the topic of photosynthesis in our STPM semester 1 syllabus. As you know, when a plant carries out CAM pathway, the stomata closes at the daytime. So, the advantage of being both sunken and closed in the daytime is that the rate of water evaporation by transpiration is reduced. Added to that, 
the stems of xerophytes can also be found to be hairy and it's all fat because it is filled with water. We call this as succulent. So this makes it very suitable to store water. Let's move on to the adaptation of xerophyte roots. There are two types. The first type grows close to the soil surface. This to take advantage of rainwater. The moment rainwater wets the soil, the roots will absorb the water. The second type grow deeper into the soil. This is so that the roots can look for oases of water located inside the soil. But both types of roots have high osmotic concentration, which promotes osmosis. Okay, we've completed the discussion on adaptations by xerophytes. Let's move on to the adaptations by halophytes. Now, halophytes only have adapted leaves and roots to help survive in the mangrove. Let me start with the leaves. Here you can see an image of a mangrove leaf. And on its surface here are salt deposits. You see, halophytes have the problem of having too much salt in their system due to the presence of the seawater. So the leaves have adapted to have salt glands that will excrete the excess salt. Besides that, the halophyte leaves are actually succulent. Maybe not as succulent as the xerophytes, but succulent enough to store excess water. The leaves also have thick cuticle as well as sunken stomata to help reduce the rate of transpiration. Moving on, let's have a look at the roots of the halophytes. Halophytes have a variety of roots as seen in this picture. The roots that stick out of the stem, these are called frog roots. They also have roots that stick out from the soil, which we call the pneumatophores. And then we have strong, thick roots called buttress roots. Now, all three roots carry out the same function. Firstly, to help support the halophytes in muddy soil. As you can see, muddy soil is not very strong. Plants can easily sink with it. Fortunately for these roots, halophytes are able to stay on top of the soil. Added to that, these roots provide large surface area to help increase absorption of water. Another factor to consider is that muddy soil does not have sufficient oxygen. So the presence of these roots that are outside the soil help in gaseous exchange, where oxygen from the atmosphere can diffuse into the roots and carbon dioxide can exit from the roots. Finally, let's have a look at how both these plants have adapted their reproductive mechanisms to help survive in their habitat. Xerophytes can reproduce sexually by producing flowers, but they prefer to reproduce asexually by producing offshoots. So what you think as hands for the xerophyte are actually their babies. These offshoots when they fall off onto the ground, can regenerate into a new plant. The halophytes, on the other hand, reproduce sexually. Through sexual reproduction, viviparous seeds are generated. Now, these seeds are special because normal seeds only produce a root upon being planted. But the halophytes Viviparous seeds produce roots while the seeds are still attached to the mother plant. The advantage of this viviparity is that when the seed falls into the muddy soil, it is prevented from sinking completely. 
Instead, the seed can remain afloat since the root is embedded in the mud and a new plant is generated. So in conclusion, you can see that be it animals, be it plants, or be it human, life is filled with problems. But living is when we overcome the problems. So with that message, I bid you goodbye.